Let's look at the molecule here, PF5, phosphorus pentafluoride. So phosphorus is happy at 5. How do I know phosphorus is happy at 5? Let's look at our periodic table. Well, if nitrogen is happy at 5, phosphorus below it will also be happy at 5. Fluorine, as with all the halogens, are happy at 7. Uh, so chlorine, bromine, iodine, happy at 7. Uh, so happy at 7, but we don't have one fluorine. We have five fluorines. So our goal is to get 40 valence electrons around the PF5 molecule. So let's make phosphorus our central atom because uh, we don't know which of the five fluorines we're going <laughs> to be central. So um, it'll be nice and simple to make, one of the, uh, to make the phosphorus the central atom. So phosphorus is our central atom, and we'll just put in our five fluorines here. Okay, one, two, three. This is pretty easy. Four, five. Okay, so uh, one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Looks like this is an expanded octet. 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Yeah, this is pretty simple. PF40. I'm sorry, PF5 with 40 valence electrons. So let's look at our formal charge and octet rule. Formal charge for this phosphorus, count with me, one, two, three, four, five. Phosphorus is happy at five. Five minus five is zero for the formal charge. What about the octet rule? Uh, one, two, here you count everything as one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the octet rule for phosphorus is going to be 10. Uh, that's what we call an expanded octet. So no need to worry. An expanded octet is fine for phosphorus uh, simply because of the fact we've got a minimized formal charge of zero. See here, PF5 has no charge to it. So, you know, PF5 has no charge then. Obviously, there should be no charges in your molecule. Okay, let's look at one of the fluorines, realizing that all of these fluorines are the same, both single bonded to the central P atom. So formal charge for the fluorine here, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 minus 7, fluorine happy at 7, 7 minus 7 is 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 minus 7 is 0. And then the octet rule. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this does have an octet. Right. Let's take a look at the um, number of bonds uh, and number of lone pairs. So we have five bonds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 bonds, 0 lone pairs. So what's 5 and 0? Uh, five bonds and zero lone pairs is going to be, okay, we're going to use table 10.1 or whatever version from whatever textbook you're using. Make sure you realize it has no lone pairs. And um, five bonds and zero lone pairs, five bonds, zero lone pairs is trigonal bipyramidal. Okay, trigonal bipyramidal. Nice, uh, nice central angle, bond angles, excuse me, of 120 degrees. PCL5 is an example. Here we have PF5, basically Cl and fluorine F are both halogens. So this would be a molecular geometry of trigonal bipyramidal. Right, five bonds and zero lone pairs. So how will we get to five? We'll take one from S. P has three slots available to it. So three plus one is four, and then one more will take it from the D. So this is an sp3d hybridized phosphorus central atom. So an sp3d hybridized phosphorus. Let me see if I can write that a little better down here. sp3d hybridized phosphorus. With the molecular geometry of trigonal bipyramidal, uh, let's uh, draw this in three-dimensional space. So we're going to use table 10.1 as a guide, central atom with no lone pairs, and we're just going to follow the scheme outlined here. Okay, so for a trigonal bipyramidal. Okay, so here we'll have our phosphorus, here we'll have one fluorine, one fluorine, one fluorine out here, and then we'll have one fluorine coming out towards you guys, towards us, the audience, at an angle, and then the other one going away from us 
at an angle. Okay, so that would be how a trigonal bipyramidal looks like. Um, what about whether it's polar or nonpolar? Uh, this is actually nonpolar. Okay, and it has to do with the fact that these are vectors. So I think you can see that this fluorine will cancel out with the fluorine below. Okay, but you see this fluorine at an angle and this fluorine at an angle, when you add the them both are going in the same direction. When you add them up, the actual sum, I'm going to draw the actual sum in green, the actual sum of these vectors actually is this. Okay, The actual sum of the vector going that way from this fluorine, I'll highlight it, highlight it as one. And the sum of that vector, see they both build on each other, and when they build on each other and the, and the directionality of their electron pulling, the net effect is something that points straight, which immediately cancels out with this fluorine that's at a straight line uh, pointing to the right-hand side. So the greens cancel out, the blues actually cancel out because one's pointing up, one's pointing down. But the angle of this pull versus the angle of those pull of those fluorines one and two, when you sum up those vectors, it cancels out the uh, pull from this fluorine. So this actually phosphorus pentafluoride, phosphorus pentachloride, phosphorus pentaiodide, uh, that is a nonpolar molecule with a um, P, excuse me, with an SP3D hybridized central atom. The molecular geometry is trigonal bipyramidal.